first section here is called greatest common factor and factoring by grouping. It's going to lead us into the overall idea of the week, which is we're going to go in reverse. Before, where we ended before the last test was when we were multiplying things that were outside of parentheses through by the whole parentheses, or when we were taking two things times two things within parentheses. What we're really focused on on this week's lessons is doing the opposite, we're taking things that are all done out into terms and figuring out how to go back and make them into factors, how to factor out common things from them and put it into a form where there's something outside and then parentheses. So where we begin is with finding the greatest common factor and factoring by grouping. That's going to then lead us into factoring trinomials and finally factoring trinomials with A is not equal to 1. Here in the factoring by grouping the greatest common factor, we're going to start with finding the greatest common factor of a list of terms using prime factorization. We're then going to show how to factor out the greatest common factor and close with learning factoring by grouping. So at the end of the last test, we had to do something like 4y times 3y plus 5. 4y times 3y gave me 12y squared. 4y times 5 gave me 20y. So the final answer was 12y squared plus 20y. Our goal is going to be to go backwards. To start at 12y squared plus 20y and figure out how to turn that into 4y times 3y plus 5. The process of finding the factors of a known product is called factoring. So, we're going this way. We're going from this to this. Multiplication goes this way. Multiply it out, find the finished product. Factoring goes this way. Start with the finished product, find what we can factor out from that finished product. To factor a polynomial means to express, to express as a product of two or more polynomials. First step when we're factoring is to determine whether the terms have any common factors. So, find the greatest common factor of a list of terms. This is showing that if we had two terms, specifically 90 and 42, and we wanted to break them down and figure out what's the largest common factor between them, what they're doing is a process called prime factorization. Truthfully, I don't know if this would be easier for some of you or more difficult. All of the things that we do with factoring requires you to kind of think in your head what are different ways to multiply to this number. Bringing it down into prime factorization sometimes is easier for students, but it requires you to really do a little more work in each problem as opposed to if you can quickly see here's something that might multiply to that, you can definitely sidestep this whole process. So I want to show you the long way and then kind of talk about the short way as we go along. But basically the long way here, if I start with 90 and I say what can I multiply to get to 90? First thing that pops into my head is 10 times 9. But if I break it down into 10 times 9, there's ways to multiply to each of those numbers. The way to multiply to 9 is 3 times 3. The way to multiply to 10 is 2 times 5. So where we end up is with 2 times 5 times 3 times 3 as the prime factorization of 90. What we did was we started with the whole number. We thought of things that would multiply to that. Anything that we could break down further, we kept breaking down. Then list all the prime numbers that you end up with being multiplied together. So I know something's a prime number if the only way to multiply it is 2 or is 1 times itself. So 2 can only get to by 1 times 2, 3 is 1 times 3, 5 is 1 times 5. Those are all prime numbers, that's how I know I'm done, but I can't break things down any further. For 42, in my head I would say that's 6 times 7. When I then say can I further break down 6 or 7, I can't break down 7, because 7 can only be 1 times 7 to get to it. I can break down 6, 6 is 2 times 3. So I end up with a prime factorization of 42, of 2 times 3 times 7. If you can get to these prime factorization lists for these numbers, then all I have to look for is what overlaps in these lists. They both have a factor of 2, they both have a factor of 3. So the overlap 
because this extra three and this extra five aren't represented, this extra seven isn't represented. So we overlap this three and two, so that I could do two times three to get six, which is the largest number that goes in evenly to both of these numbers. So we conclude that two times three equals six is the largest natural number that divides 90 and 42 exactly. That means it's the greatest common factor. So it shows here 90 divided by six would give me 15, 42 divided by six would give me seven. So I could factor out a six from each of them as the greatest common factor. The greatest common factor is a list of the integers. In, of a list of integers is the largest common factor of those two integers. Find the GCF of each of the list of numbers. So when I go to find these GCFs, I want to make a prime factorization tree. When I start with 24, I can break it into 6 times 4. 6 could break down into 3 times 2 and 2 times 2. So I'd have 2, 2, 2, 3 as my prime factorization. I did that by breaking it into 6 and 4. Let me just show you I'd get the same exact thing if I broke it another way. If I wanted to break this into 12 and 2, 12 would break down into 3 and 4, and then 4 would break down into 2 and 2. I'd still end up with 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, the same thing I got when I did 4 times 6. So even though your initial way that you're going to split your factor tree may be different, you'll always end up the same place with prime factorization. Instead of talking at each of these, I'm just going to show them. So when we do the prime factors for 24, we get 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. For 60, it's 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. And for 96, it's 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times, two times 3. So when I end up looking for where the overlap is, every one of them has two of these twos as factors. So we can include two twos in our factor tree, or in our greatest common factor multiplication, I should say. Every one of these also has one three. This extra two isn't represented in 60. This extra five isn't represented anywhere else. And this extra two wasn't in 60, so neither of these twos. We have two twos and a three. If I multiply them out, 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is 12. So 12 is the greatest common factor of these three numbers. Prime factorization of example B is being shown. It was 6, 35, and 50. So here we have 2 and 3. Here we have 5 and 7. Here we have 2, 5, and 5 when we break it down. Again, I can show you how you get to these. Really, with 6 and 35, there's only one way to multiply to each, so there's no second way to get there. With 50, I could either break it down into 10 times 5. If I broke it down into 10 times 5, this 1, 5 is prime, and then 10 splits into 2 times 5. I also could see it as breaking down into 2 times 25. That would be 2 times 25, where 25 would further break down into 5 times 5. So you can see how they got to all these prime factorizations. But what you can also see is that there's nothing common on all three lists. 2 is on these lists, but isn't on this one. 5 is on these lists, but isn't on this one. If it doesn't appear on all three lists, then it can't be a common factor of all three numbers. For that reason, there are no common factors of these three numbers. Technically, you could say 1 is a common factor, but really, prime would be the answer. There's no common factor. Since there are no prime common factors to 6, 35, and 50, their GCF is 1. That would be their greatest common factor. So to find the GCF, the strategy that they're giving you here is to write each coefficient as a product of prime factors, identify the numerical and variable factors of each term. We'll look at the variable factors a little further on, but basically, if I have, for instance, x to the third, I could write that as x times x times x. If I had x to the second, I could just write that as x times x. If I was looking for common factors between them, they each have two of the x's. x to the third has an additional one, but since it's not in the x to the second list, their greatest common factor would have two x's in it or x to the second. Two multiples of x, I should say. Multiply the common numerical and variable factors identified in step two to obtain the GCF. If there are no common factors, the GCF is 1. 
So here we're looking at 12y squared plus 21. We want to break it down based on the greatest common factor. So when we start with 12 and 20 and look at what goes into both 12 and 20, 12 breaks down into 2 times 2 times 3. 20 breaks down into 2 times 2 times 5. So it's the 2 times 2 that they have in common, or 4. 4 is the largest number that goes into both 12 and 20. Once I get that 4, I then look at variables. This has a y times y. This has a single y. So in common, they have this single y. But since this y squared has two y's, and I couldn't take the second y over here, I can't take a second y out of there. That leaves behind one y. If I divide 12 by 4, it leaves behind 3. Here, when I'm trying to take a 4y out of 20y, when I divide 20y by 4y, the y's go away, so there's no y in my term left over. 20 divided by 4 gives me 5. So what I've really done is I've identified the common factor of 4y. I've divided each of these two terms by that common factor of 4y. What it left behind was 3y and 5. So I split up this 4y that I factored out of both of them by putting it out front of the parentheses. Inside the parentheses, I put what was left behind after the division for each. 3y plus 5. Note that if I multiply back, 4y times 3y would give me 12y squared. 4y times 5 would give me 20y. When I'm trying to factor 25 minus 5m, I realize this has an m, but this does not, so there's not going to be any variable that I can take out of both. When I go to factor 25 as a prime factorization, it becomes 5 times 5. That means the common factor I can take out of each of these is 5. So here we've written 25 as 5 times 5. We've written 5m as 5 times m. The common factor is this 5. We've identified the common factor. We're now going to divide each term by that common factor to get what's left over. So I divide 25 by 5, and I get 5 left over. I divide negative 5m by 5, and I get negative m left over. The 5 we divided by goes out front. Then we have parentheses, the 5 left over, and the negative m left over. Again, if we multiply it back to check our work, 5 times 5 would give me 25. 5 times negative m would give me negative 5m. Factoring by grouping is going to be not only something that's done here, but it's something that's going to come back and be a method that we use somewhat when we're doing factoring trinomials and always when we're doing factoring trinomials with a is not equal to 1. So it's important that you learn this method now because it's going to be referred to in the future. When we want to factor by grouping, it's when a polynomial has four or more terms, and we see if we can arrange those terms so that we put really the first two terms together and the last two terms together. We group the polynomials so that the first two terms have a common factor and the last two terms have a common factor. We then factor out that common factor from each group, and we factor out the resulting common binomial factor. If there's not a common binomial factor, we have to go back and group it a different way. When I say a common binomial factor, let's say I start with 3x plus 3. If I take 3x plus 3 and I factor the common factor of 3 out of it, what's left behind is x plus 1. If I then have another part of the problem that says plus 4x plus 4, and I factor a 4 out of that, 4x plus 4 becomes 4 times x plus 1. That's when they have that common binomial factor, x plus 1. The first two terms gave us 3 times x plus 1. The next two terms gave us 4 times x plus 1. When you do factor by grouping, that's your goal, is to have the parentheses that come after both be equal to each other. So if I start out with 2c minus 2d plus cd minus d squared, I look at the first two terms and I say I see a common factor of 2 that I can factor out. I look at the second two terms and I say I see a common factor of d that I can factor out. If I do that factoring, the 2 comes out of 2c minus 2d. When I divide 2c by 2, I just get c. When I divide 2d by 2, I get negative d. 
Then I factor out a D of the last two terms. When I divide CD by D, the Ds go away, and I'm just left with C. When I divide negative D squared by D, it becomes D to the 2 minus 1, which is just D to the first. So I'm left with a negative D. The key here is when we factor by grouping, we want these two factors to be the same. If I don't end up with the exact same thing, both letters, numbers, and signs, then my factoring by grouping has gone wrong somehow. As long as I end up with the same thing in both parentheses, then I can do what I call outsides times insides. Outsides 2 plus D times insides C minus D. Even though insides, the second parentheses is listed twice, when we write our final answer, we only have to list it once. Because really, if we multiply back out, it would end up distributing just like this. So my final answer is outside C minus D. I'm sorry, outsides 2 plus D times inside C minus D. This is just showing that if we use the FOIL method of double distribution, we would get C times 2 gives me 2C. C times positive D gives me plus CD. Negative D times 2 gives me negative 2D. And negative D times D gives me negative D squared, which is exactly where we start. So we went from these four terms to start with to two parentheses being multiplied.